What's up guys, it's Jesse with FPSSquared.com and today I want to talk about a device or well a piece of software called Pi-hole. Um, Pi-hole is what a lot of people are calling a network-wide ad blocker um, and you can get it at Pi-hole.net. Um, what a lot of people do is they put it on a Raspberry Pi, but it does technically work on a lot of different Linux distros on basically any machine that has one of the supported Linux distros will um, allow you to run the software. Um, what it does basically is it sets itself up as a DNS server and the DNS server has a blacklist that will block certain domains, um, specifically domains from like top ad networks like Google Ad Services and things like that. Um, now I wanted to make this video because I feel like a lot of people online are not actually explaining what it's going to get you when you set it up. So like I was saying, what Pi-hole is basically is a glorified DNS server that will block certain IP addresses and URLs. Um, so what this means is, is that some ads are going to get through um, because it's just basically based on user... Well, I don't want to say user necessarily, but human input of the blacklist. Now whenever you install Pi-hole it is going to have a default blacklist and it's going to immediately block most static page HTML like embedded ads. Um, but there are going to be a few ad networks and a few other advertisements that are going to get through. For example, YouTube pre-roll video ads are not blocked. Um, and really, I haven't found a way to block YouTube video ads. So if you're wanting to set up Pi-hole to get like a free YouTube premium, like block ads on your TV and everything, it's not going to work. It just cannot do that and so you can go on forums you can go on message boards try to find and sort through all of these user generated blacklists that supposedly will block youtube ads but i have yet to find a custom blacklist that will actually work um so um having said that it is good for for blocking about 90% of ads, but you're still going to have ads that get through because at the end of the day, if there is an ad network or a new ad pops up that the Pi-hole devs aren't aware of or haven't added to the default blacklist, then it's going to get through on the network. Having said that, I still think it's worth getting, but here's what I think you should kind of think of Pi-hole as. Instead of necessarily thinking of it strictly as an ad blocker, it's really more of a network security tool and kind of a page accelerating tool, like a loading accelerator. Um, and the way that is, is that it physically, uh, I say physically, but it actually blocks the connection between your network and the network that the ad is coming from. So what that means is it's going to block malicious ads uh, that might have viruses or malware embedded in them. And it's also going to make websites load faster because it's not even going to, your internet is not even going to try to load the ad. So what I would recommend doing, and it sounds redundant, but I'll explain the reasoning why for it. What I would recommend doing is getting a Pi Hole, uh, you know, getting a Raspberry Pi, they're like 35 bucks, installing Pi Hole on it and setting it up, uh, and then configuring your DNS on a device or a router to go through the Pi Hole. So definitely do that. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase security and it's going to increase page responsiveness and speediness of loading. And then, on top of that, I would recommend having a browser extension such as uBlock Origin or AdBlock, you know, something like that, that will also block ads. And that's going to block, having that is going to block 99% of all ads, and it's going to keep you safe online. 
And I said it sounds redundant, but it actually isn't. Think of the browser extension as being the actual ad blocker, and then the pie hole being an extra layer of protection between you and the ad networks, as well as having the advantage of also blocking any ads as well. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, be sure to check out FPSSquared.com for more gaming news and tech news and reviews. And our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash FPSSquared. We'll see you next time.